It is important to install a ground insulation as well as an insulation along the edge of the slab. This prevents a great amount of heat loss into the ground or out through the edge. What is typically used is a 2 inch polystyrene insulation board. Place your edge insulation on the inside or the outside of your foundation wall. Make sure you use enough insulation to cover the entire edge. Before you place your ground insulation, begin with a flat level ground surface. Begin setting the insulation board. It is also a good idea to duct tape all seams to prevent any gaps. Make sure the entire slab area is covered with insulation. After insulation has been put in place, lay reinforcing mesh over the insulation. The adjoining sections should overlap and be securely fastened together. Now that we've put our insulation down and have our wire mesh in place, it's time to start laying tubing. We first check our design sheet. That will tell us what size of tubing, tube spacing, and loop length is to be used in this particular area. All in-floor tubing should be six inches away from walls and cabinets. Do not place tubes in areas where equipment will be bolted to the floor. Do not make bends tighter than 6 inches for 3 8 inch tube or 9 inches for 1 half inch tube. Most tubing has foot markings on it so that it can be installed without actually measuring its length. There are typically two types of tube layout patterns, counterflow spiral and the serpentine pattern. The counterflow provides the most even distribution of heat. The supply and return lines run next to each other, creating a more even temperature between the tubes. The counterflow spiral is the more difficult of the two patterns to install. The serpentine pattern is used when most heat loss occurs along a wall. The water temperature decreases as it flows through the tube. This layout is used when hotter water needs to be concentrated in areas of high heat loss. The serpentine pattern is the most common method of installation. Once it's been decided which pattern type to use, find the area best suited for your remote manifold. It should be as centrally located as possible and easily accessible. Cut the end of the tube clean. Fasten it down at the base of the manifold location leaving three to five feet of excess tubing. Use nylon ties to secure tubing directly onto the wire mesh. Unroll the tubing by hand or use an uncoiler and fasten tubing down every foot. Keep track of your tube loop length. 
3 8 inch tubing should not exceed 200 feet and 1 half inch tubing should not exceed 300 feet plus or minus 10%. Once you've completed your first loop, it's important to mark each tube and distinguish each loop to avoid confusion once all loops have been installed. When all tubing is installed and tied down, we can determine how many loops are required. Once all tubing has been connected to the manifold, it is very important to pressure test the tube. This is done by installing a temporary air pressure device and pressurizing the system up to 60 PSI. Now all we need to do is pour the concrete. When pouring the concrete, care should be taken that the tube is not damaged. It's best that the tubing be raised to the center of the concrete slab pour. This can be done by lifting the wire mesh if necessary. If a leak does exist, it'll be easy to spot. Remember, you have 60 pounds of pressure in that tubing. Once the concrete is leveled and set, your in-floor heat distribution system is complete.